Hi guys, I just thought I'd do a quick mail bag tonight. Um, obviously I've unbagged the stuff already, but uh, it's a mail bag that I got today. Just a couple of replacement parts. Sorry, I must apologise in advance. I'm suffering some hay fever at the moment, so my nose is a bit blocked and I'm a bit nasally, probably a bit snuffly too. So obviously this is a top plate. Uh, this is for the uh, Real ACC X210 version 2. Um, mine managed to bounce its way through a tree and smashed the top plate so um, I have not been flying that and I thought it was about time that I replaced it and uh, got that back in the air so that's, that's that now this here is the bottom plate not for the same frame this is for the X210 uh, the original this is what uh, is basically the Sharpoo frame and uh, the one that I have now I managed to bust uh, the other day um, my friend Matt and I were trying to see how far around a horse racing track we could fly and uh, I actually got reasonably far but uh, I eventually lost the video and uh, my quad crashed um, I actually thought it crashed into some grass but it ended up underneath the fence and uh, unbeknownst to me, I'd actually broken this arm here, and uh, it didn't snap right off. It actually, um, it actually kind of bent up and then delaminated all through here. So it was a bit spongy, and I put some CA glue right through sort of the delaminated bits and then wrapped it in tape. And it's actually still flyable, but under hard throttle it kind of uh, oscillates a bit and makes a horrid noise but uh, yeah it still flies okay a bit jelloey but this is what i'm really recording for tonight everyone seems to be flying these or at least the uh, the actual alien itself from um, impulse rc you know i just cannot justify spending the kind of money that uh, the real frame is worth and uh, the Martian itself um, is considered to be kind of like a, a fairly good clone of the, uh, the Alien. But this is, this is slightly different. This is actually not the Martian 2. This is the Martian Anniversary Edition, which is slightly different. And good, different, bad, different, I don't know. I'll, I'll find out. So in this first pack we've got the top plate, the bottom plate and the sandwich plate. The arms get sandwiched between the bottom plate and the sandwich plate obviously. Uh, and here we've got the arms, those are 4 mil by the looks of it but I'll get the calipers out in a minute and have a look. Uh, they actually look like they're reasonably, reasonably strong. But I've said that before and uh, things haven't worked out well. So this bag here, this has got the, the camera mounts by the looks of it. And I don't know what that other thing there is. I'll take the various bits out and have a look. Um, these are the landing pads. The Alien slash Martian is a battery on top kind of frame. so. These could actually be useful. I've never used these before. Uh, some standoffs. And these little guys here. I don't know if you can see those. But those actually go beneath the top plate. And there's like this little extra kind of uh, plate. Which I believe just gives more protection to the top plate. So I'll pop those out in a second and have a look. And obviously there's a fairly hefty bag of screws there. Uh, the frame does use a lot of screws. That probably adds quite a bit of weight to the frame, but uh, you put a fairly decent set of motors on and a nice powerful battery. And you won't even notice it there. And finally, some standoffs for the PDB. PDB, you say? Yes, indeed. The Alien, sorry. The Alien comes with its own PDB. The Martian 2 comes with its own PDB. 
the Martian Anniversary Edition does not. You actually have to use your own PDB. Now that suits me because I'm not a big fan of the PDB that comes with the Martian 2, or the Alien for that matter. Um, and I'm going to use a PDB that has an OSD, and that suits me better, so I actually quite like this idea. Right, so let's get these arms out. Okay, so here's the arms. They're a bit rough, they could do with the sand. I'll do that later. Um, you know, this thing cost 26 New Zealand dollars or something like that, so I'm not going to complain about a little bit of, bit of rough around the edge. Right, turn those on, and we are looking at, you know, those are four mil. Right, so let's have a look at these top and bottom plates and get the bag open. Right. Okay, dokes, so what have we got here? So, this is the top plate. That looks like it's a mil, mil and a half, maybe. That is. That's 1.5 mil. Sandwich plate looks like it's 1.5 mil as well. Yep. And the bottom plate, I'm guessing that's 2 millimeters. Yep, 2 mil. So, how strong that's going to be is anybody's guess. Um, there's only one way to find out. And so, that sandwiches onto there like so with the the arms in between like so and then your PDB just sits on top like so you can have obviously your uh, uh, your battery lead out the back or at the side entirely up to you Right, well I'll put that together and uh, I'll show you what it looks like when it's all all put together. I'll show you what it looks like built up. Uh, not a full build, but just a, uh, a quick frame put together so you can see. And sorry, I forgot to mention uh, that I'd have a look through this bag of bits as well, just before I get underway with the, uh, with the build. So I'll just put these to the side. We have that, that, that and that. Now these, I know for sure, are the plates for the camera. So obviously you have one either side and the, uh, the camera is sandwiched between those. This, I know, is the plate that goes at the back here. And that just kind of provides a little bit of extra protection, and that's where those little um, short little standoffs were for. That kind of goes here, and your antenna pops up through the middle there. This here, I believe, is a camera mount for a board cam. Now I don't know how it works and I don't know if anyone actually uses them but it's there. What I'm not so sure about is this thing here and I suspect that that would go here either so that your PDB doesn't touch here or it's a protection plate that goes on top I just don't know I really have no idea um, on top maybe I don't know maybe that goes on top of your flight controller and then your VDX can go on top there I don't know I have no idea Right, I'll, I'll uh, put the frame together and uh, we'll have a look after that. Okay, thanks. 
Okie doke, so I've got the frame together. It's fairly straightforward to put together. Um, it's a little bit tricky to get the arms on, especially when you start off with the screws upside down like I did, but uh, once you've got them in the right way, you can drop the, uh, drop the arms down, put the sandwich plate on and drop the bolts through, and that actually makes it easier to do. Uh, wasn't sure how to get these camera plates in. Had referred to the picture on the Banggood site. Um, I thought that these kind of uh, filleted bits here were for the angle for the camera, but it doesn't appear to be like that. It looks like you have just these two holes on the side for your camera. There's no actual locking mechanism as such. So that's a bit of a disappointment, but uh, it is what it is. Overall, easy enough to build. Um, yeah, even for a first time builder, I think this is probably going to be pretty straightforward. I'd heard that the arms didn't really lock in very well, um, basically because they don't meet in the middle there, like the, uh, the actual alien arms or the Martian 2 arms. But the, there's three bolts going through each arm so I think it's fairly unlikely that they're going to move especially once you've put some Loctite on there's no there's no flex there that I can see so I will fly it and uh, see how we get on so I'll just give this away see what the actual weight is and what have we got there? We're looking at, with hardware, it's 132 grams. I'm not sure if you can see that. It's 132 grams with hardware. Now, <coughs> speaking of hardware, I have ended up with quite a few spare screws and things. And I don't know where they would go. So I have to assume that they are in fact spares. I guess you could replace the shorter ones with some of these. There's two, four, six, eight, ten left. No, no, I was thinking that uh, they might be, you know, they might be for the motors, but... Uh, Oh, here yeah, those fit through there. There's a couple of mils left. But there's not enough, so I'm not quite sure what these spares are for, other than being spare. Which is great. You can never have too many spares. Now, the other thing that I bought to go with this is a alien GoPro mount. And that actually just bolts onto the top there. Now, this one's adjustable. It's got this kind of slidey mechanism. Oh, it's quite tough, so I don't think that's going to move. It's adjustable. Like, uh, like that. So if you want less of an angle, you can actually uh, slide it down like such. And uh, then your battery just kind of fits on the back there. So I'll pop that on, and I'll show you what it looks like. Cool. So I got the... Uh, GoPro mount on there. I had to modify it slightly because it wouldn't fit as it was. Um, this mount is a little bit narrow so I have to assume that the actual alien frame is slightly narrower than this. So what I've had to do is basically take a cut out to the edge of this mount and uh, basically just poke poke it in from the inside to out like so and same on the front now you can see I've started screwing that down and it's kind of squeezing it out so I suspect that what I'm going to have to do is just put some washers on there so that uh, it spreads the load out but uh, it's fitting and it's fitting well there's no bow in the bottom here I thought there was going to be, well there was, but uh, now that I've got all four screws in, it actually um, is fitting quite well. So 
So it's actually going to work quite nicely. And the purple that I got goes quite nicely with the, uh, the purple standoffs of the frame. So with that on there, uh, I'll chuck a battery, just give you an example. And the battery will actually sit quite snugly between the uh, that mount there and this plate on the back. That's a relatively short battery. That's a, uh, a China Hobby Line. This is a GNB. It's slightly longer. And so you can see that that's actually going to fit uh, quite snugly in there as well. So uh, overall I think it's actually quite a good size, you know. Uh, I run my battery leads like this on a top mounted frame. It's been a while since I've run a top mounted frame actually. I'm quite looking forward to trying it again. Cool, so that's it for now. Um, that's just a, uh, that's the PDB that I'm going to use. Uh, it's got the OSD built in. So that's it for now. Uh, once I've got the thing all built up, I'll uh, do a follow-up video. Cheers. I've done a provisional build of my real ACC Martian 2 anniversary frame. The camera that I'm going to use hasn't arrived yet, so I've put in an old shitty uh, Sony HS7, HS1177. Possibly the worst one I've got, but um, it's just to get it up and running because I want to fly this thing. And uh, of course, now that I've done this, the proper camera, which is a Rotorite Swift, will turn up, no doubt. So here's the frame uh, built up. This is just using uh, my real Racer Star. Sorry, Racer Star uh, BR2205 2300 kV motors. Uh, they're not overly powerful, but they will do for now. And uh, Racer Star 30 and 35 amp ESCs. I had two 35s left over. So I had to get some 30s just to fit on there um, to replace the ones that I broke. It's not finished, but it's going to go outside for a hover test now. So it's probably going to struggle to lift the uh, the run cam that I'm going to put on there, but I've used those motors lifting a run cam before and uh, it seemed to go okay. Not overly powerful, but it'll work. Well, really, considering uh, something usually goes wrong, so I'm a little bit nervous. Hmm, need to go for an FPV fly, really. I'm plugging this freaking battery. Okay.